Hello, my name is Megan Mize, and I will be covering today ePortfolios in Crafting Your Professional Digital Identity. I work for the Center for High Impact Practices at Old Dominion University in Norfolk, Virginia. So you may be asking, what is an ePortfolio? And folks use this term pretty interchangeably for a number of different digital artifacts. But today I'm going to talk about two different types. The first is the archival ePortfolio, and the second is known as the showcase or presentation ePortfolio. Now the first, the archival ePortfolio, is a central location for students to purposefully and frequently save a variety of material over time. The idea being that during your coursework, you're creating a number of different artifacts within your course, and you should be saving those in order to show other audiences such as uh, employers, our graduate committees, the kinds of material you've produced and what you've learned from them. But in order to show that to people, you have to be saving it purposefully over time. Um, and then, of course, you have the showcase portfolio, which is that public facing document, uh, often in the form of a website. Uh, which is a platform for cultivating this identity as a professional or as a learner, um, showing the skills through the use of artifacts that you've pulled from your archive. And you may also wonder why go through the trouble of developing an ePortfolio? Um, and again, this is because you want to have the competitive edge when you are competing for positions on the job market you want to be sure that when someone looks you up online there is a professional identity that they can find you also want to have this repository of artifacts so that should you change career paths or look to return to academia for additional training you can pull on these um, work you've produced before you also want to be reflecting on what you've learned um, because you don't learn in a vacuum. You know, so if you've done an activity, you want to be able to, both for yourself and for others, uh, articulate what you learned in that activity, as well as connecting um, your learning experiences to one another. Uh, if you did something in an engineering course, you might want to be able to tie it to your writing course. How do these two intersect? Um, and of course, self-evaluation. What are you doing well? What might you need to work on in order to be competitive? Um, and as always, showing other people who are unfamiliar with you uh, the experience and the skill set that you have. And this is just a list of skills that employers tell us that they're looking for when they're hiring um, individuals. And it's a long list, but if you look through it, you'll see that in many ways, print resumes can't convey these skills to an employer. They often need to see that skill in action. So how will they know you're working effectively with other people, that you're a good team player? How do they know um, that you're able to make ethical decisions in the workplace? Um, how do they know that you're able to communicate well and write well? Or how will they know that you're able to apply what you've learned in an academic setting to a real world setting? Um, resumes can hint at that, but a digital portfolio can show it to them. Um, so I like to give an anecdote about why all of this matters. Uh, I am in the field of English studies. Uh, I am an instructor of literature and writing. Uh, and when I was a graduate student, I was encouraged to create an e-portfolio as a way of um, advocating for myself when I went to conferences and things like that. And, and so what you see here is a screenshot of my very first e-portfolio. Um, it had a little bit about me, it had my resume, it had my teaching philosophy and research that I was conducting, uh, as well as a way to get a hold of me if people were interested in following up. And when I was at a conference, uh, I had the mediator of my panel introduce me using my bio, which she never asked for. And I realized that she had pulled up my ePortfolio. 
Uh, she Googled me. She had found this and was giving a very accurate description of my, of my career using the words I'd crafted. Uh, and when she was done and the panel was over, she actually approached one of my co-panelists who turned out to be a dean at another university and said, you know, aren't you looking to hire someone who does uh, literary studies and digital pedagogy? Um, you should really look through Megan's portfolio. And so both of those individuals are still contacts within my professional network and have continued to help me in my career. But that was a moment in which this work that I had done prior to, to going out um, helped me network in, and it showed them what I could do uh, in a really productive way. So it certainly does matter to take the time to build this kind of identity. And going back to those types of portfolios I've mentioned, there is the archive and the showcase. And for each of those, we really advocate for particular tools, um, very fond of free tools in particular. Um, so for the archive, when you're saving over time and you're saving strategically, anytime you think that there is a good representation of your work or some of those skills that I showed you earlier, you should save it. You, you don't know what you're going to need in the future. Um, and so we advocate for things like Google Drive, Dropbox or Box or even um, OneNote, um, all of these being cloud platforms so that you could access this anywhere, anytime. Um, as for the Showcase ePortfolio, which you'll recognize as a personal website, uh, personal professional website, I should, should clarify, we advocate for things like Wix or Weebly. Um, you may know of Squarespace. Some people use the new Google sites. Um, and also, of course, WordPress. And this is just a screenshot of what a Google Drive uh, archive can look like. Um, I have been saving in this space for seven years and have thousands of documents, um, videos, sound files, um, images. You can just have a huge wealth of material to then later show, pull evidence of those 21st century skills out and then put into something like a showcase portfolio. And what I have here is a screenshot of the cybersecurity template that we use here at Old Dominion University. Uh, this is a WordPress website, and every student going through that program um, has to have this template activated. And you can see at the top these pre-built tabs, and beneath each of the tabs would be a drop-down uh, menu for courses associated with these basic principles of cybersecurity. Um, so you might draw on this template and, and craft a similar similar website using those outcomes. But you really want to make it your own. You want to humanize yourself for employers um, and, and try to keep a variety of material on there, not just writing, but images of yourself, images of you doing your work or your work, uh, products, you want those visible, um, certainly audio and video. Uh, the digital era is incredibly important because it both humanizes you for employers who are looking at a large swath of applicants. Um, it makes you memorable, uh, makes you stand out. And the thing that I'll close this particular presentation by reiterating for you is that ePortfolios are really a process. Um, you know, a lot of times folks will want to try to create one in a night. And you can certainly create a passable web presence in a couple hours. But a good ePortfolio, a really effective one, constantly changes with you um, because you will be constantly producing new work. Your goals will probably change. Um, and your portfolio is going to evolve alongside you just like your resume would. Um, and you are going to want to put up-to-date material on it so that um, people can see you grow over time and become the sophisticated um, worker. So getting started isn't hard. Um, we certainly offer tutorials, free tutorials at ODU. If you just type in ODU ePortfolio, you should find our page with tutorials for working in things like Wix, uh, Google Drive, WordPress. 
Um, you can also look at lynda.com for support like that. Many of the platforms such as um, Wix offer their own tutorials um, and you can certainly build um, your own websites with HTML. So uh, the one thing to take away is that a really good portfolio is always in process. You are always adding to it. You are always changing it. Um, and it takes time. But I think you will find that it is well worth the effort when you can create this narrative of yourself and the skills you have so that you stand out from the rest of the crowd. If you have questions on this presentation, please feel free to email me. My email is m m i z e at odu.edu, and we look forward to hearing from you.